Welcome back. Today we've got a new video. We're going to discuss crimping solid contact terminals. Okay, let's dive right in. We get a lot of questions regarding solid contacts and how to crimp them and using different wire sizes. So you may be familiar with the HD30 series. So that's a common connector we actually sell and we use that as a bulkhead connector. Uh, if you actually look at those, they come with three different wire sizes, potentially, depending on which connector you get. But there is a 12 gauge, a 16 gauge, and a 20 gauge. The DT series of connectors also uses the same crimp terminals. So the DTM, which is for 20 gauge, the DT, which is for 16 gauge, and the DTP, which is for 12 gauge. So when you look at these, you think, well, what happens if I have a 14 gauge or an 18 gauge or a 22 gauge? I can't use these? Well, the short answer is no. I want to go through what you can do to use these different wire sizes. Let's just recap uh, a standard way to crimp the, the solid terminals. Let's say if you have a 16 gauge wire, you can simply use a 16 gauge pin and socket for your setup. And when you use your crimpers, you're going to dial this dial to a 16 gauge. And then you will set the, the depth accordingly. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, check out some of our other videos showing how to do that. Um, or if you're using a crimper like this, it's going to be the same thing. And then you'll set your, your turret to the, correct, uh, to the correct location and crimp it. Same thing with the 20 or with the 12. You're always going to set the dial to the wire gauge and set the turret accordingly. Let's go ahead and take a look at the 20 gauge pin and socket and see what wires fit into them. Let's check the 18 gauge wire. Yep, the 18 gauge fits. So you've got a 20 gauge pin right there with an 18 gauge wire in it. What you're going to do is you're going to set your, your depth to the same thing you always set your 20 gauge pin and socket to, but you're going to set the dial to 18. And what that dial does is it sets how, how deep it crimps it. So if it's, a, if it's an 18, it's going to crimp a little bit less than it would a 20, but it's going to give a good crimp around the diameter of that wire. That's going to be true on anything. You'll always set the dial to the wire size and the depth to the pin and socket, whichever one that is. 20 gauge will fit, and of course, it's gonna be the same thing with the 22 gauge. The 22 gauge wire also fits, Oops. and you set, the, you set it to a 22 on the dial. Let's carry on to the 16 gauge uh, pins and sockets. By the time we get done, we'll assemble a table that will show which wires, uh, which wire gauge sizes fit in which pins and sockets. So that's what we're working on developing right now, but it's good to actually look and see physically what happens when we put these uh, pins and sockets with certain wire gauge sizes. So the 16 gauge, no problem working with a 16 gauge wire. So pin and socket, no problem there. Let's check the 14 gauge. Nope. No good there. That's not going to work. We'll get back to that one in a minute. The 18 will clearly work. No problem there. But actually, even by the details of Deutsch and what they specify, you can actually go ahead and put a 20 gauge in here. Let's say if you have a 20 gauge wire for whatever reason, you happen to have a 16 gauge spot open, you can go ahead and put that pin or socket onto the 20 gauge wire and you can crimp that uh, you know, setting, setting your dial to 20 and the depth to a 16 gauge pin or socket. We can get that 20 gauge in there. I'm going to go ahead and give you an idea of what that looks like. Here's a 16 gauge pin and it's crimped to a 20 gauge wire. So that works actually no problem. And then we have the 12 gauge. The 12 gauge, you can use the 12 gauge pin and socket to crimp either the 12 or the 14, same settings. So what do we do with our 14 gauge and some of these other kind of in-between sizes? What can we do? Well, let's go ahead and get into that. <laughs> 
Here's where we enter in the banded pins and sockets. Take a look here. There is a green band here, and this is a purple band. Kind of looks brown. So those physically are the same exact size as the 16. So the banded ones, the green band, and the non-banded 16 gauge size fit in to the 16 gauge locations. There's one difference, and that difference comes in on the inside diameter. It's almost hard to see, but there's a very slight difference. That green banded pin and socket has a thinner wall. It allows you to put a little bit bigger wire in there. So let's jump in and take a look and see what we can do. If you remember, this 14 gauge wire didn't really fit in anything. Well, with the green band, that 14 gauge drops right in. Again, the pin will only have the same current rating as the 16 gauge pin and socket. Just because you put a bigger wire in does not mean that you get more current flow. But that is how you're going to deal with your 14 gauge wire. Again, you can still put the 14 gauge in the 12 spot if you want, but if you have it in a 16, you can put it in the 16 spot with a green banded wire. Here we've got, let's take a look at the purple band. The purple band can of course fit a 20 or an 18, but you can also put a 16 gauge wire into a 20 gauge spot. That 16 gauge wire fits into a 20 gauge spot. Again, you will not get a bigger current rating by putting in a 16 gauge into that spot. It still has the same current rating as the standard 20. What you're gonna to wanna to do is test and make sure that your wire will actually fit into the connector. Once you crimp it, you wanna make sure that it fits into the spot that you intended it to. The, the shielding is gonna be a little bit bigger depending on if you have Tefcel or TXL wire. The rules apply to both types of wire. It doesn't matter what type of wire as far as TXL or Tefcel wire, the rules apply to crimping these pins and sockets. To recap what we have going on, we have three standard pin and socket sizes, 12, 16, and 20 gauge. We also have the special ones or the banded ones, green band that go into a 16 gauge spot or a purple band that go into a 20 gauge spot. The only times I really use those, the green is if I'm gonna put a 14 gauge wire into a 16 gauge spot or a 16 gauge wire into a 20 gauge spot. You can generally get away with only those two situations requiring the special pin and socket. We'll go ahead and flash up a table that we put together that shows all of these. This will be on a website. It'll show everything that can be used, uh, every wire size that can be used and what pin and socket size. And feel, feel free to take a look at that, download it. Um, again, really not a whole lot of reason, only two, two reasons I really see to use those. Um, but remember to go ahead and set your indexer to the correct wire size that you're crimping and set the depth to the pin and socket size. There is no extra current that you get from putting a bigger wire size into a smaller pin and socket. For example, a 14 gauge into a 12, or, or sorry, 14 gauge into a 16 gauge pin and socket is still gonna have the same current rating on the pin and socket. Uh, there's you know, a lot of different reasons why you use different size wires, but this is just an overview of how the solid terminals work with different wire sizes in Tefcel and TXL wire. Thanks for uh, tuning in and let us know if you have any questions. If you have any questions, give us a call, shoot us an email, or check out the website. Also check us out on these social media platforms. Like, share, follow, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever it deserves. And thanks again for the support.